Good uh, afternoon. Today we're going to talk about a nitty knotty, which is one of the oddest things that we have in spinning or in weaving or in anything else. It's spelled N-I-D-D-Y N-O-D-D-Y. Nitty knotty, and there's a weird poem that goes with it. Nitty knotty, nitty knotty, two heads, one body, but there it is, you know, whatever. Most people will use a two-yard nitty knotty unless they're making little sample skeins in which they'll use a smaller one. This is a two-yard nitty knotty, and we know it's two yards because if we measure from the tip of one arm to the tip of the next arm, it's 18 inches. So 18 there plus 18 there plus 18 there, and then 18 there gives you a two-yard nitty knotty. So that's how you measure. It's from the end of one arm to the end of the next arm, and that gives you your measurement. So the way that we wind these is a little bit different, and a lot of people have a tough time with this. There it is on the floor. A lot of people have a tough time with this. You can start it in a couple of different ways. I used to always start it with a slip knot on one arm, and then I was told that there was actually a better way to do it. But you can start it with a slip knot there, and holding my non-dominant hand right here in the middle, I never move my non-dominant hand. So I'm going to come down to the next arm, up to the next one, around to this one, and just like that, keep going around and around and around and around, winding your yarn from your bobbin, your spinning wheel bobbin, that you have spun, and this puts it into a nice neat skein, just like that. So that the hand that holds the knitting knotty never, never loses its grip. Now there's another way to do this that I just learned today, which is actually really quite brilliant and I will show you, and it reinforces the fact that that middle hand never ever moves. So instead of starting with a slip knot, we're going to take the loose end, and we're going to hold that loose end here. And this reinforces that I never let go of that, because if I do then it just falls on the floor. So I'm going to go up to here, down to there, round to there, back to there, and I just keep winding onto the nitty knotty to wind my skein. So when I'm done winding the skein, let's pretend that's done right there. All right, so we cross these, the beginning and the end, cross them like this and run them around behind and back to the front, and then we can tie any kind of knot we want. This is just an overhand knot, and that secures it there. And then I might also want to tie a knot here and one here and one here, just with short little chunks to make sure that everything stays tangle free. And then I slip it off here. Time to take it off, it just slides right off the arm that has no whoop de doo and a point on it. And it comes off and there is my two yard skein. Then to make this into a skein shape, I hold one end open, twist the other arm end around, and put that in there and it makes a neat skein. Just like that. So that's a nitty knotty and this is how you measure it from here to here, multiplied times four, and that's the length of your nitty knotty. A lot of the smaller nitty knotties are done just for making little sampler size skeins, because of course, with not very much yardage on it, that's not much of a skein. But you can do it in smaller skeins on little teeny tiny nitty knotties, and those are a lot of fun to buy at festivals from the woodworkers who always have decorative turnings on them. So that's today's lesson, a nitty knotty and how to make a skein.